Okay, here's a quick little trick, maybe not tricky, but a unique question. The statement says, use the duality transform of problem 7.64, the last question in that chapter, together with the fields of an oscillating electric dipole, uh, equation 1819, to determine the fields that would be produced by the oscillating, quote, Gilbert dipole, composed of equal and opposite magnetic charges, instead of a current loop. Compare equations uh, 36 and 37 and comment on the result. Okay, well, re remember the Gilbert model had the two magnetic charges instead of having a current. And we'll go ahead and see what's going on. Clearly, what we need to know is that the oscillating electric dipole fields, which I have e, uh, ED for electric dipole and E for the magnetic dipole is uh, subscripted to MD. Um, I, they, they have some symmetries here. Uh, constants change a little bit. That 1 over C factor is there. Uh, P goes to M, and we see we have some sign changes. Uh, you know, be aware of it. Clearly, they're being cross, they're being cross products or kind of different directions, but be aware. All right. So if we recall the duality transform, you know, we saw this again in chapter seven. Uh, you see that E prime is the phase difference, or maybe not even phase difference, but the uh, the transitional difference alpha. And, you know, we see what the charges are. So our, our job here is just to uh, match everything, so to speak. So here we want alpha equal 90 degrees. We see the transform quantities are E prime is equal to E cosine 90 plus CB sine 90. So we know the cosine of 90 degrees goes to zero. Sine goes to one. So we see that E prime is actually CB, okay? Similarly, CB is equal to negative E. So B prime is equal to one over negative one over CE. Similarly, we see what the charges are. So with the Gilbert model, this what becomes important is that we have M naught, instead of being the vector area and current, is just equal to the QM uh, with some separation distance D, much like the uh, electric dipole. Um, so here, then, we see that QM prime is to C QED, uh, but we know that QE times D is the electric dipole, so we substitute that in. And so what we see is that P naught is actually equal to negative M naught over C based on this duality transform. That's pretty cool. So if we're looking at this, so the transform fields of the so the transformation of the oscillating fields, once we plug in the primed uh, quantities, in this case P naught, we see that uh, we get a negative cancel, again, all color coded red. We see that M naught uh, stays. So in our representation, we see that the transformed e, uh, the electric dipole field transforms into the um, electric ma uh, magnetic dipole field, which is pretty darn cool in my opinion. Go back and look. Okay. Uh, we have to be uh, aware that the uh, since this is transformed by 90 degrees, the units or the uh, unit vectors that we went from theta hat, 90 degree transition puts us to phi hat. So be aware of that. That's where we get that from. Uh, similarly, the B fields from the electric dipole, once we plug in the P naught goes canceling down. We get a cancellation of negative and a combination of Cs. So we see again that we have something very similar to the magnetic dipole field. Again, be aware that that, transit, that alpha changes the phi to a theta and so on. Um, and these are identical to the fields of the ampere dipole. So that's pretty darn cool. I like that pretty consistent. I wouldn't rely on it, but it's pretty cool to see in action.